And what we want to do is we want to spend some time uh, creating a network from scratch, okay? Because this is something that we will do, something that you'll want to do. And um, it's pretty straightforward for the most part, okay? So as ever, we would start with a node, okay? And a node will represent uh, something that we want to model. So if we were modeling something like a social network, a node would represent a person. Okay, and each one of these nodes, as you'll see, you can modify tons of properties for them. Okay, so I don't particularly like the yellow. I tend to like white, and I usually add sort of a a second color there so that you know, can give it a little character. And if you just right click and go to properties, you can change all of the properties that you want. Okay, so if I wanted to, I could add text, okay, if this represents a person, I can put that in there, okay, but for now we don't really need to worry about that. Okay, so each of these nodes we can modify. And once you have a node that's figured, configured the way you want to, you, you can just copy it and paste it. All right, we know we're going to need a bunch of these, so I'm going to paste a bunch of them. And as you can see, this works pretty much like any other application that, that you might want to use. Uh, okay, so let's start with um, connecting these different nodes. Okay, obviously we can make links. It's extremely easy to make links. In fact, if you just um, click on a node and start moving, you'll see it'll create them automatically. Now, by default, it will create connected links. Okay, um, pardon me, directed links. And when we talk about the properties of different nodes and links, we'll talk about two major types of links. They're directed and undirected. Okay, so for today, this these would be an example of directed links, right, where this node is the source and this node is the target, right? Um, but, you know, we, we may not really necessarily want it to be represented that way, so it's easy enough for us to just change it. Okay, and now that's an undirected edge or link. And we'll make this one undirected as well. Okay, and so networking is all about nodes and links. So basically all you need to do to work with this is just organize them the way you want. Okay, however, however that is. And you know, it's pretty basic. You can just grab the object you want and move it. Right? So it's really not so uh, complicated or difficult. Okay, so while we're here, let's introduce a little bit of vocabulary. When we talk about two dyads, okay, so when we talk about, let's say, these two dyads here, uh, these two nodes here, we refer to this as a dyad. Okay, so two, two nodes uh, that have some relationship to each other are called dyads. Okay. If we add a third node here, right, so if I copy this and I paste this here, right, and I grab an edge type that I want, sort of pull it here, okay, these three nodes together are referred to as a triad, okay, so any three nodes that are connected in some relationship are a triad. This particular triad is an open triad, okay, because only two of the three are actually linked, okay, and you'll see that uh, the relationship between open triads and closed triads is actually quite important. Um, we'll have a, a module later on that'll describe the process of triadic closure, okay, which um, in social networks gives us some clues about uh, how cohesive, how tightly clustered that uh, group is. Okay, so if so this is an example of an open triad, and if I pull this here and connect, that is a closed triad. All right, so these are, we're just going to go through the vocabulary of things that we'll need uh, as we go through the course. So this is an example of a dyad here, and this is an example of a closed triad. Okay. Uh, so let's just keep adding some links here to create some more structure. Um, as the networks get larger, we'll start to ask questions like this. 
how far is it from this node here to this node here? Okay, when we start to ask questions like that, we're asking questions about the path, okay? And a path is simply the number of edges that it takes, okay? The length of the path is simply the number of edges that it takes to get from one node to another, okay? So in this case, we have to go one, two, three hops, right? Three edges. So that path length would be three. Okay. Uh, so this is the type, these are the types of questions that we'll want to ask. And uh, as you can see, it's, it's pretty basic stuff for the most part. Um, it's essentially just counting. Okay. So once we have a structure like this, we can start to analyze certain aspects of this structure uh, that might be interesting to us. Okay, so one of the types of things that we want to see is which of these nodes is more crucial than the others. Okay, so for example, what are the consequences of us removing this node? Okay, um, if we remove this node, what other nodes will it affect? Okay, and the answer is really none. Okay, we'll lose this link, but the rest of the network structure will be left as is. Okay, so one way to think of this node is that this node really isn't very central. Uh, it's not quite as important as some of the other nodes in this network. Okay, on the other hand, if we remove this node, okay, all of a sudden we have a serious problem. We will no longer have a connected network. In terms of our graph, this node here okay, is what we would call a cut vertex. If we remove this node, okay, and I'll do it just for fun, okay, if I remove that node, we no longer have a connected network. Okay, we have a, a network that is disconnected. There's more than one component. Okay, this is a component, and this triad here is a component. Okay, so if we can, we'll want to undo that okay, and put that back. But this is an example of a cut vertex. The other question that we might want to ask is, what links are really crucial? Right, so what happens if we remove, say, this link? Okay. Again, this link is what we would call a bridge. If we remove it, all of a sudden, again, we have two components. Right? We're back to our original dyad and triad. Okay, so that would be an example of a bridge. Okay, and we'll undo that so that we're connected again. So these are the types of things that we'll be talking about as we start to work with the software. And part of your job will be learning how to build networks and build small graphs with this software. I want to show you a few t other tools before we uh, pack it up for the day. All right. If you go back to tools, okay, there are a few other things here that are worthwhile. One is analyze graph. Okay. Um, this is a pretty easy one, right? We built it by ourselves, okay? So it's not such a big deal. We know that there are five nodes. We know there are five edges. We know that there are no self loops, okay? Um, one thing to keep in mind is, if I wanted to, I could do something like this. That's a self loop, okay? Um, there are some networks and some types of networks that will have this property, okay? So food webs tend to have this type of uh, construction. Um, but for a lot of the graphs we will build, we won't need these, okay? So we're going to get rid of this self loop. Okay, but that's an example of what a self loop is. Uh, if we go back to analyze graph, we'll see that we have a node count, edge count. It'll give you things like topology, okay? So is it directed and cyclic, okay? Directed, a directed network would mean that these edges have directions, right? So they would have sort of an arrow with a source and a target on them, okay? But it's not true. This network is neither directed nor is it cyclic, okay? Um, 
so we don't have to really worry about that. Um, is it a planar graph? Okay, so a pla one way to think of a planar graph, it's a graph that can be drawn uh, without the lines crossing. Okay, and it gives you the number of components. Okay, we have one component. And it also gives you some visual things and some internal things. Okay, so this is just a quick way, if you need some really quick statistics and you need to know what type of um, what type of graph you're dealing with, okay, at a very high level, the number of components and things like that, you can use this. For a little bit more detail, you can actually use something called centrality measures. Now, we're going to talk a lot about centrality <laughs> measures, um, but basically, you'll, there will be times where you'll want to know sort of which nodes are more central to other nodes. So just to get us kicked off here, um, one way to think of this is if you look at this node, okay, this node has one, two, three edges, okay, more than anyone else. This means that this node has a degree of three, okay, a degree of three is um, pretty, you know, pretty important. Um, in this network, that's pretty high. Okay, so one thing that we'll want to do is sort of make sure that um, we recognize things like that because that tells us that this is an extremely important node in this network. Okay, it is a higher degree than any other node. So if you want to, you can actually change the presentation, okay, based on the centrality. All right, so what we can do is say, okay, and then notice the node with the highest centrality, okay will look larger, okay, and they'll tag it with numeric quantities that tell you that this is more central than some of the others. Okay, notice what you got here. We have a 1 when there's 1, 2, 3 connections. We have a 0.67 when there are 2 connections, and we have a 0.33 when there's 1 connection, okay. And the sizes of the nodes themselves will actually reflect that. Well, I think this is enough for today. Um, we'll talk about some other things later, okay, there are certain ways that you can save this and things like this, but this is really just to get you started with YED and start to get you to think about the things that um, we will do in this class.